Factoring trinomials. Today we'll be factoring trinomials with a leading coefficient or when a is equal to 1. In most instances, you'll be able to do this using mental math. But we will start using the x method, which we'll be using later when a is greater than 1. So to begin with, let's remember the standard form for a quadratic trinomial is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are numbers. So when we use the x method, we draw a big x, and we multiply the a and the c together, the numbers together, and then we put b down here. So then we need the factors of a, the two things that multiply together to give you a times c, and add to give you b, and we write them here. So what does this look like? So here I have x squared plus 12x plus 35. a is 1 b is 12, and c is 35. So I draw my x, and I multiply a times c, and I get 35. And I write b, which is 12, down here. And then I come up with factors of 35 that equal 12. 7 times 5 equals 35. 7 plus 5 equals 12. And since this has a leading coefficient of 1, I'm going to start factoring here. So I know I'm going to have two binomials, and in order to get the first term, to get x squared, the only possible combination I can have is x times x. And now that I have these two factors, I'll just put those in, a plus 7 and a plus 5. And now when I FOIL or multiply these two binomials together, I'll end up with the trinomial I started with. So that's how we'll be factoring trinomials today. So number 29 x squared plus 6x plus 8. So the first thing I'll do is I'll draw an x. I'll then take a times c, so 1 times 8 is 8, and then I'll write b down here. So now I need the factors of 8, what two things multiply together to give me 8, and add to give me 6. So factors of 8 are 1 and 8, and 2 and 4. So 2 and 4 are my factors. So now when I factor, I know I'm going to have two binomials, and since the leading coefficient is 1, I know the only possibility to get x squared is going to be x times x. And then I have my two factors of plus 2 plus 4. So that was easy because we had two pluses here. Let's try one a little different. Number 31, x squared plus 6x minus 27. So I begin the same way. I draw an x. And then I multiply a times c. 1 times negative 27 is negative 27. And I write b down here, which is 6. Now I need the factors of negative 27 that add to 6. So first I'm just going to write the positive ones and see if I can see a combination here. 1 times 27, 2, so I got 3 times 9. Whoa, 3 times 9, I know the difference is going to give me a 6. So it's going to be 9 times 3. So when I multiply them, I'm getting a positive 27. And when I add them, I'm getting a 12. So one of these has to be negative. Well, if I put a negative here, negative 9, times 3 is negative 27, but negative 9 plus 3 is a negative 6, so it's got to be a negative 3. So 9 and negative 3 multiply to give me negative 27, and 9 minus 3 gives me 6. So now I can factor. So my first term is going to be x and x, and then it's going to be a plus 9 and a minus 3. Number 33, AX, A squared minus 15A plus 56. So again, I begin by drawing an X. And I multiply A times C, which is 1 times 56. And I write B here, it's 15. So I'm going to think of factors that multiply to 56 and add to a negative 15. Well, I know like 8 and 7 multiply to 56. 
But to get a negative 15, they have to both be negative. So negative 8 and negative 7. Multiply to 56, add to negative 15. So again, when I go to factor, since the leading coefficient is 1, I know the only combination to get a squared is a times a. And I have factors that multiply to give me negative Multiply to give me 56 and add to give me negative 15. So go ahead and back and try number 30. Try number 32. And try number 34.